Starship is constantly evolving, growing larger and more powerful over time. Just take a look at its impressive appearance. A towering structure with a sleek, polished metal exterior. And to build such giants, many aspects of its design and construction have changed, especially the welding techniques used during assembly. If you've been following Starship from the beginning, you'd know that the first prototypes were incredibly rough and unrefined. So, in today's episode, let's take a deep dive into how SpaceX mastered the art of welding for Starship. But first, we need your support. This is my new space channel, and we're on the way to reaching the first 100 subscribers. Your support means the universe to us. Hit subscribe now and get ready for an out-of-this-world adventure. You won't be disappointed. Thank you very much. Initially, SpaceX had what seemed like a perfect plan. Building Starship from carbon fiber composites in California, where their main workforce was located. Carbon fiber is renowned for its exceptional strength, so this decision appeared logical. However, a sudden shift occurred when a stainless steel Starship prototype emerged in Texas. While initially surprising, this choice quickly proved its worth. First, in terms of temperature resistance, carbon fiber begins to degrade at 200 degrees Celsius and requires a thick heat shield to withstand the 1,600 degrees Celsius re-entry temperatures. In contrast, stainless steel naturally has a much higher heat tolerance, needing only a thin heat shield. In terms of cost, stainless steel costs just $3 per kilogram compared to carbon fiber's $150 per kilogram. Moreover, manufacturing with steel is far simpler and more flexible. Producing 9 meter wide sections from carbon composites would have required an unprecedentedly large autoclave. Interestingly, the idea of a stainless steel rocket wasn't entirely new. NASA had built the Atlas rocket in the 1960s using ultra-thin stainless steel, so thin that it had to be constantly pressurized to avoid collapsing under gravity. However, Building Starship wasn't without its challenges. SpaceX's initial team, recruited from a water tower manufacturing company with little experience in rocketry, struggled with welding the 4.5 mm thick stainless steel 301 sheets. The first versions of Starship used a welding technique called flux cord arc welding. This method involves passing an electric current through a wire, creating sparks between the wire and metal to fuse them together. The molten metal fills any gaps or imperfections. During flux cord welding, the wire is coated with a combustible material that releases shielding gas to protect the weld from oxygen in the air, which could cause rust. This method is effective in controlled environments, but SpaceX faced challenges since they were working in a large tent rather than a proper factory. Many welds were performed outdoors by inexperienced workers, leading to less than optimal results for Starship's appearance. The welds on the first prototype, known as Mark I, showed signs of corrosion, cracks, and rough edges. To improve them, SpaceX ground down the welds until they were flush with the surface. This wasn't just for aesthetics, it actually made the welds stronger. Sharp edges and small cracks could lead to bigger problems when Starship was pressurized. Smoothing the surface eliminated these issues and reduced the risk of weld failures. Ideally, each weld should be as strong as the surrounding metal. However, Starship's first test showed this wasn't the case. The Mark I prototype exploded due to a failed horizontal weld, causing the bulkhead to detach. To address these challenges, SpaceX made significant improvements for the next prototype, SN1. They used thinner stainless steel sheets for each ring, reducing the amount of welding required. They also switched from stainless steel 301 to 304L, a type of steel with much higher corrosion resistance when welded. At this point, they also upgraded to tip-tig welding, which allowed them to have better control over the weld pool. Everyday Astronaut, in a tweet in 2019, asked Elon, is there any substantial difference in welding, manufacturing techniques, between these bulkheads and MK1, MK2? And Elon Musk replied, Almost everything is different. These parts are stamped versus manually bump formed and tip-tig welded versus flux core. 
higher precision, stronger joints, and 20% mass reduction. Since then, each ring was made from thinner single sheets of stainless steel, which required much less welding. In addition, the TIP-TIG welding method is a better solution. Unlike its predecessor, TIP-TIG welding offered enhanced control over the welding process, resulting in cleaner and more consistent welds. This precision was especially crucial when working with stainless steel, a material known for its unforgiving nature in displaying imperfections. By leveraging TIP-TIG welding, SpaceX engineers could achieve welds of unparalleled quality, meeting the rigorous standards demanded by the aerospace industry. Furthermore, the introduction of TIP-TIG welding ushered in a new era of efficiency and reliability in weld production. With its ability to deliver high-quality welds at a faster pace, TIP-TIG welding enabled SpaceX to streamline the manufacturing process, accelerating the timeline for Starship production. This increased efficiency not only optimised resource utilisation, but also contributed to cost savings. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for our channel. Every subscription is a motivation for me to create videos every day. Now, let's get back to the content. In conjunction with the adoption of TIP-TIG welding, SpaceX also embraced the integration of laser welding for select sections of the Starship spacecraft. Laser welding, renowned for its precision and versatility, offered unique advantages in certain applications, complementing the capabilities of TIP-TIG welding. By incorporating laser welding technology into their welding arsenal, SpaceX further diversified their welding capabilities, enabling them to tackle a broader range of welding challenges with finesse and proficiency. SpaceX also employs another welding method for its Starship and Super Heavy rockets, creating a difference compared to other companies, and that is the Friction Stir Welding FSW technique. FSW is a unique method of combining metals, differing from conventional methods such as gas welding or arc welding, in that it is a solid state welding technique and doesn't require either of the materials being combined to be melted. Instead, they are softened to the extent that they can penetrate each other's surface with a little help. This method produced exceptional mechanical properties such as fatigue strength and stiffness, as well as negligible defects in the weld region. Furthermore, this welding technique also reduces the wastage of materials and ensures an enhanced appearance with lower surface finishing requirements. Lastly, one of the most lauded benefits is that it does not have any harmful effects on the environment, since toxic fumes are not produced in the complete process. SpaceX design engineers employed FSW to connect the break-off fuel tanks in their rocket which have a vital role in the propelling of the spacecraft after it enters space and settles in its orbit. The reason for this application was evidently the requirement of remarkable strength in break-off fuel tanks of such a powerful rocket, which cannot be fulfilled by traditional methods like liquid-state welding or non-permanent joints like rivets. The evolution of welding techniques within SpaceX's Starship project was paralleled by a strategic shift in material selection, significantly impacting the quality and durability of welds. One of the most notable transitions was the replacement of 301 stainless steel with 304L stainless steel, a decision driven by the pursuit of enhanced weld strength and corrosion resistance. There is another advantage of 304L steel over both 301 and 304, and it relates to its low carbon content. When heated to high temperatures, such as during welding, chromium and carbon react to form areas that are more prone to cracking and corrosion. SpaceX's motivation behind the switch from 301 to 304L stainless steel seems to be entirely about welding. The 301L stainless steel extended beyond corrosion resistance, proving especially beneficial in the context of cryogenic temperatures, which are integral to space exploration. At such extreme temperatures, 304L stainless steel demonstrated remarkable strength and resilience, outperforming 301 stainless steel by a significant margin. This heightened resistance to brittleness and deformation at cryogenic temperatures 
was instrumental in ensuring the structural integrity of Starship's welds, safeguarding against potential failure during space missions. Complementing the benefits of material selection, SpaceX also leveraged the cold rolling process to further enhance the quality and performance of welds. Cold rolling, a mechanical process that subjects metal to compressive stress without the application of heat, served to refine the microstructure of stainless steel, imparting increased strength and durability. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for our channel. Every subscription is a motivation for me to create videos every day. Now, let's get back to the content. SpaceX is currently in the process of producing Starship Fire 2, incorporating several design changes while laying the foundation for the upcoming V3, a massive version expected to reach a height of 150 meters. In these new versions, durability remains a top priority. Since Starship is designed for deeper space exploration rather than just reaching orbit like V1, it will have to withstand increasingly harsh conditions. In particular, re-entry processes will expose the spacecraft to extreme temperatures, demanding robust design and materials. After six flights, Starship 5-1 has demonstrated steady improvements, especially in handling the challenges of re-entry. However, full recovery remains difficult, highlighting the need for further advancements in manufacturing methods. Encouragingly, the first prototypes of V2 have shown significant improvements. A side-by-side -side comparison of the V1 and V2 nose cones reveals a major upgrade. The welds on V2 are nearly invisible, giving the impression of a single seamless structure. This not only indicates improved durability, but also highlights progress in welding technology. But durability is only part of the equation. SpaceX is also focusing on reusability, striving to ensure that their rockets can complete multiple flights. Advanced welding techniques will play a crucial role in achieving this by reducing structural stress and streamlining refurbishment processes. Another key advantage of the new welding methods is speed. With a significantly increased level of automation, production time has improved dramatically. The first V2 prototype, Ship 33, was built in just 42 days, a testament to SpaceX's commitment to efficiency. However, the true effectiveness of V2 welding techniques will be tested in real flights, beginning with Flight 7 early next year. These missions will provide critical data for further refinements, paving the way for V3 development. Once welding and manufacturing principles are stabilized, SpaceX's next step will be large-scale replication. The company's Star Factory facility is now operational, continuously producing components. To meet mass production demands, Additional welding systems will be needed alongside planned expansions like Giga Bay. This new assembly bay will be taller and wider, capable of accommodating larger Starship versions currently in development. As for deployment timelines, SpaceX has ambitious plans for both Starbase and its Florida facilities, which are expected to use V3 versions. NASA has stated that Starship will transition to operations in Florida once it achieves a launch cadence of one per week, a milestone that could happen as early as next year. To reach these goals, preparing the manufacturing system, including welding technology, is essential and must be addressed now. SpaceX's ultimate vision is to produce one Starship per day, requiring 24-7 operations. Continuous advancements in welding techniques and overall production methods will be crucial to making this goal a reality. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.